Item Number, SCP-3663, Object Class, Euclid, Keter, Threat Level, Orange, Special Containment Procedures, SCP-3663 is currently located in what were formerly the Site-54 maintenance tunnels. To prevent demanifestation, no personnel are to be given access to the area, and efforts are to be taken to reduce the tunnel's moisture levels. Should SCP-3663 demanifest, MTF New 4 box cutters are to be mobilized, with the goal of A. Locating SCP-3663 and B. Preventing any damage occurring to the entity. If possible, SCP-3663 is to be fitted with GPS tracking devices to aid in recontainment. Once located, SCP-3663 is to be transferred to a mobile pipe network and remanded to Site-54. Efforts are to be undertaken to discourage SCP-3663 from transporting itself to a location within 2 kilometers of SCP-015. Description SCP-3663 is a humanoid entity constructed primarily from cardboard in the form of boxes and tubes, adhesive tape, and twine. SCP-3663 is fully capable of movement and vocalization via an unknown mechanism, and has proven to be semi-sapient, responding to questions and reacting to its immediate environment. The interior of SCP-3663 contains crude cardboard and paper models of all major human organs, with colored wool representing blood vessels and the nervous system. SCP-3663 does not require these components to function, and their purpose within the entity is unknown. SCP-3663 is capable of instantaneously transporting both itself and other objects over long distances, with no upper limit to the entity's range observed. The method by which this is achieved is currently unknown, though it is known that physical contact with the entity is required. Despite being able to utilize its abilities regardless of physical location, SCP-3663 has shown extreme preference for 3663 applicable regions, defined as an enclosed tunnel-like space or network of spaces measuring at least 40 centimeters in diameter, and will invariably choose to manifest within such areas. SCP-3663 behavior is easily predictable when not influenced by outside forces. The entity will engage in a simple cyclic pattern of actions, which have been recorded as follows. 1. SCP-3663 manifests in a 3663 applicable area, emitting low vocalizations and waving its arms in a manner suggesting attempted intimidation or fright. The entity will begin roaming the area, pausing periodically to emit louder, higher-pitched noises. 2. SCP-3663 will attempt to make its way towards any human subject in the area. Note that if no subject is nearby, this action will not commence, and SCP-3663 will simply remain in the area indefinitely. Rarely, SCP-3663 has been observed pursuing subjects outside of 3663 applicable areas, to a distance of, at most, 50 meters. 3. The subject is gripped by the entity, and experiences heightened apprehension and or paranoia. SCP-3663 demanifests. 4. SCP-3663 manifests in a second 3663 applicable location, along with the subject, who is invariably unconscious but otherwise unharmed. After releasing the subject and moving a short distance, SCP-3663 demanifests a second time, reappearing in a third location and triggering the beginning of a new cycle. If at any point during this cycle SCP-3663 is damaged in such a way as to inhibit movement, or is moved more than 50 meters away from a 3663 applicable area, it will instantaneously demanifest, returning to the beginning of a new cycle in a repaired state. Small damages, such as minor cuts or tears, will not trigger this effect. Addendum 1, Interview Log 3663-1 Interviewed, SCP-3663. Interviewer, Researcher Doyle. Forward, the following interview was conducted via two-way audio-visual recording systems embedded within a makeshift interview chamber located inside SCP-3663 Central Containment Area, formerly the Site-54 Maintenance Tunnels. 
Begin log. Hello, SCP-3663. I was wondering if- The... the Tunnel Monster. I'm sorry? I'm the Tunnel Monster, not... not SCP-3663. The Tunnel Monster. That's me. I see. So, uh, Tunnel Monster, why do you do what you do? Moving people around, I mean. The Tunnel Monster captures people. That's me. I'm the Tunnel Monster. I... I capture people and take them into the tunnels where I live. In the tunnels. The pipes. I'm the Tunnel Monster. I understand that, but what do you hope to achieve by doing it? You seem to pick your locations at random, so it seems to me that you're not really making much of a difference. You could just as easily- Please stop. It's what I do. I have to do it. I'm not- I am the Tunnel Monster. It's me. Please stop. What? We're trying to help you here. You can't want to spend all your time underground. We can get you set up here with your own room. You wouldn't even have to crawl about in those dirty pipes anymore. Doesn't that sound nice? What do you say? Please, I... I'm the... The tunnel monster. I don't want to, to do this. It's what I do. I have to do it. I'm the tunnel monster. I do it. I'm the tunnel thing. The tunnel monster. Two wet patches are observed forming on SCP-3663's face. In the pipes, hiding in the tunnels, going to get you. I have to do it, please. SCP-3663's front surface begins to lose structural integrity due to accumulated water damage. Please. I don't want to play anymore. I'm the monster. The tunnels. I've... <laughs> that will be all for today. Thank you. End log. Due to the possibility of severely damaging SCP-3663 to the point of initiating a new cycle and a breach of containment, no further interviews are being scheduled for the foreseeable future. Addendum 2, Event 3663 Delta, on SCP-3663's behavior diverged briefly from established patterns. At 1420, the entity emerged from the Site-54 maintenance tunnels and began to emit vocalizations in excess of 80 decibels. These vocalizations, described as pained by on-site staff, had a profound psychological effect, placing many personnel into a state of shock. Footnote 1. Phrases recorded include, Don't leave me, I don't want this, and let me go home, among others. For roughly four hours, SCP-3663 wandered the facility, attacking staff and engaging in small-scale vandalism of facilities. Of note is the fact that SCP-3663 repeatedly attempted self-harm by means of knives, pipes, water taps, and firearms. While SCP-3663 was repeatedly destroyed in this process, it subsequently re-manifested in the nearest air duct or maintenance area. Following the event, two bodies of former personnel were recovered from within Site-54. Autopsies showed that the cause of death was a buildup of paper residue and wood pulp in all major blood vessels, as well as sinuses, ear tubes, and the majority of the digestive and respiratory systems. A number of other staff members were found to have been affected to a lesser degree, but are expected to make full recoveries. The entity's object class and the definition of an SCP-3663 applicable area have been updated accordingly. Subsequent information gathering revealed that this event coincided almost exactly with the death of Person of Interest 3663-1. Footnote 2. See Addendum 3 for more details who died of natural causes at the age of 79. Prior to their death, the individual in question had led an entirely unremarkable life, with no connection to any other anomalous groups, individuals, or objects. Attempts to establish a connection with the creation or origin of SCP-3663 are currently ongoing. Addendum 3 – Discovery Log Show Video Transcript 3663-1 Forward. The following is a transcript of Video 3663-1, recovered from civilian CCTV footage in 
the footage displays the first recorded evidence of SCP-3663's existence. Prior to this date, no records, sightings, or physical disturbances suggesting anomalous activity relating to the entity have been found. Begin Transcript 1522, August 9, 1979 Two young children, both males between the ages of 8 and 12, are seen playing in an abandoned construction yard. One, designated POI 3663 1, is running from the other, designated POI 3663 2, who is wearing a crude cardboard suit resembling SCP 3663. 0023, both individuals leave the camera's view briefly before returning. The game they are playing seems to revolve around Dash 2 chasing Dash 1 through an unfinished water drainage system. POI 3663 2 repeatedly grabs Dash 1 and attempts to pull them deeper into the tunnel. Likewise, POI 3663 1 uses a number of make believe weapons to fend off the assaults. 0104 the sky is observed darkening slightly as POI 3663 1 trips on a length of pipe. POI 3663 2 is seen speaking, grabbing 1 and pulling them upright. POI 3663 1 pushes them away, apparently angered. POI 3663 2 steps backwards as if struck. 0130 POI 3663 2 begins to shudder while the visible sky continues to darken. Footnote 3 Note that no anomalous weather patterns were recorded for during the period of time in question. POI 3663 1 clutches at their head, pointing at POI 3662 and shouting. Both children appear extremely distressed. 0150 POI 3663 2 tries and fails to remove the upper portion of their suit. 0249 Camera visuals are lost, replaced by static. A continuous hum is heard. All other electronic devices in a 200 meter radius are also recorded to have failed simultaneously. 0412 Camera visuals return, neither individual is in view, and no additional anomalies are observed. 0608 SCP-3663 is seen walking past the camera. The entity shudders briefly, clawing at its face before demanifesting. End transcript. POI 3663-1 was later found lying unconscious in a disused subway line over 4,000 kilometers away. They displayed no memory of either SCP-3663 or POI 3663-2 and claimed that they were playing alone. Societal reintegration of the subject occurred with no complications. To date, neither POI 3663-2 nor any record of their continued existence have been recovered. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell. Link in the description.